Hello and welcome to this short tutorial to explain one of those slightly awkward preference settings that doesn't quite work the way you think it should unless you understand how it's supposed to work. Now the one I'm thinking about can be found in your preferences so if you are on a Mac you go to your Premiere Pro menu and then go down to preferences I'm on a PC so that would be under edit preferences and we all want to go to general and the preference I'm thinking about is this one here which is called default scale to frame size. This is an important preference to understand because it affects the way that Premiere Pro is going to use the footage once it has been brought into your project panel. Once it's in your project panel, if you don't have this ticked and you bring it in, it will be used in a different way than if you do have it ticked. And in fact, you'll see that you can bring in the same piece of footage once without this ticked and once with it ticked. And even though it's the same footage, it will behave in a completely different way. So when this box is ticked and when it is not ticked, depending on when your footage comes into the project panel, is important. Let me show you. At the moment, please note, I do not have this ticked. So default scale to frame size. So I'm going to click OK. And I'm going to bring in this piece of red footage that I have here. This is courtesy of Adobe. This is red footage uh, ready for the Ultra Key, which we'll do another day. I'm going to click and drag, and I'm going to drop that from my media browser straight into my project panel. It's going to import the file. Now that that's in my project panel, I can click and I can drag and I can drop it on my timeline. This is Premiere Pro CS5, so I can mix footage on my timeline. I can mix and match. At the moment, this is an HDV project, but I can mix and match red footage on there. And bear in mind, I do not have default scale to frame size. So if I let go and I put my current time indicator above the footage, you'll see that in actual fact, I'm just seeing a tiny bit of the footage. And if I go to my effects controls, select my clip, open up motion and start to scale down, scale down, scale down, scale down, eventually you'll see where it fits. So that did not fit. Now, just zoom out a bit so I can see a bit more of my timeline. This is my footage before, which is my birds and what have you. And now afterwards, I've got my very much scaled down, in fact, a 50% scaled down red footage. Now, if I go to either the Premiere Pro menu on a Mac or Edit Preferences on a PC, General, and I now click the Default Scale to Frame Size button, and I click OK, and I bring in that same piece of footage, which was this one here, click in my media browser and drag it up to my project panel and let go. And now I take that footage. Now this second version down here is the one that's been brought in with that preference checked. If I grab that, drag it and drop it on my timeline, and then move my current time indicator across to that particular item, you will see that it has already scaled it. And if I click on that item, and I go to my motion, and I go to scale, you see that scale is at 100%. So what it's done is it's fitted the one dimension that would fit, and obviously the other dimension doesn't fit, this is why we've got the black bars the other side, but it has scaled it so that it does fit at least in one way at what it calls 100%, which we know in reality, if we go back to the unscaled footage, was originally 50% to get the same results. So if I take this scale back up to 100, click in there and type 100, you'll see that this is how it would have looked at 100% without that preference checked, and this is how it looks with that preference checked. So obviously it makes a massive difference. It makes your footage fit. Let me bring in a couple of other examples. Now at the moment we have that preference checked. So it says default scale to frame size. Click OK and I'm going to bring in a still image this time. So, so double click in my project panel in this grey area here to open my import dialog box and I'm going to go to this uh, Bambra Castle picture. Double click on that and then I'm going to just zoom into my timeline I'm going to take the Bambra Castle, grab it and drop it on my timeline and put my current time indicator over it. And again, this is a photograph. It doesn't quite fit, but it has scaled the height. It's scaled the one bit that it can scale. It's got slight lines either side because obviously the aspect ratio is not the same as the video camera that this sequence was originally set up with, which was HDV. But it has fitted. Now I'm going to go to my Preferences, Preferences, General, and I'm going to untick the box. Click OK, and I'm going to double click in here again to bring in the same picture, Bambra Castle. Now click and drag and drop that picture right next to the original one. And you'll see that again it is massively bigger because it's taken its original size. And in fact, we can see what its original size is up here. You can say it was a still image, 
and it was 3,298 by 2,012 with a pixel aspect ratio of 1. And if we look at the one before, you'll see it's exactly the same size, but that one fits and that one doesn't simply because of that preference. Now this is a very important preference if you're going to be bringing in lots of assets and you want them to fit into your sequence properly and quickly and not have to fiddle around with all kinds of bits and pieces to try and scale things down going into the effects controls, motion, scale and playing around with the scale all the time. At least you know that one aspect fits and that if you do need to do some scale it'll only be a little bit to get rid of the black lines either side or maybe you'll be able to crop it. I don't know how it will work with your sequence. But please note that it makes a big difference. You can bring in the same piece of footage and it will behave entirely differently depending on whether you brought it in with or without that checkbox checked in your preferences. My name's Andrew Davis. I hope you found this useful and thank you for watching. Mm -hmm.